Juan or Murli? Who's the greatest spinner of all time? Oh, oh, I'm torn here. Yes, people, I'm Srini and you are watching MTAC TV. And of course, today we're playing Finish the Sentence with one of the best coaches in the gentleman's game. A man who's the brains behind the number one ranked Australian Windsor cricket team. I mean, I could keep going, but you already know who it is. It's none other than Mr. Matthew Mott. How's it going, Matthew? Good night, Srinivas. How are you, mate? I'm doing, I'm doing great. I can't complain. I can't complain. So, guys, the rules of the game are very, very simple. We rattled through a couple of random sentences. We could talk about Steve Waugh. We could also talk about Vegemite. I mean, it's totally random. And, you know, Matthew completes the sentence. And, yeah, that's how it goes. Three more time. The first sentence that I have for you is, I fell in love with cricket because... Uh, my brother played it. I know I wanted to be like my brother. And uh, we had some great backyard battles with my father as well. Growing up, my cricketing idols were? My cricketing idols were Alan Border and Rodney Marsh, both left-handers. And uh, hence, that's why I, apparently when I was a young player, I switched from right-handed to left-handed. To be like those two. Well, I think I think Hussey has a similar Alan Border story, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, that sounds that sounds brilliant. But anyway, the, the third sentence that I have is my favorite moment as a coach has to be. Oh, that's a great question. That one. I think um, it's a toss-up. Uh, winning two World Cups very special. The first one in the West Indies was probably pure relief because uh, we hadn't yeah. won one for a while. And the, the last one in Australia in front of 87,000 was pretty hard to beat as well. So I'd have to say joint those two moments. Class clown in the Australian team is? Uh, Megan Shoot is the class clown, but um, I, I give her a pretty good run. I, I was a pretty uh, uh, you know, annoying sort of a player as well at times. So the players would probably throw that back on me a bit as well. So a lot of downtime in cricket, so it, it makes way for the, the great Australian test at different times. Next question that I have, as I said, guys, the questions are totally random. So now, Matthew, I want to know, the first country that you'd like to travel to in a COVID-free world is? Uh, great question again. Um, I, I had a fantastic time, my first IPL coming back through the Maldives. So okay. I'd say that was a pretty special place in mine and my wife's heart. Um, so if I could get there, that would be pretty special. Kill to go to the Maldives right now, but hey, the situation doesn't allow it. But anyway, the next sentence that I have is, if I have to pick my top three in my all-time 11, it would be? Oh, well, top three. Um, I would say I'm going to be a little bit biased towards the Australians here, but I'd say Meg Lanning as our captain would be uh, my number one pick. I think Elise Perry is one of the great all-rounders of all time, would be fantastic. Um, and then for pure, um, just this, she won a World well, she didn't win the World Cup, but she knocked us out of one, Harman Preet for her innings. Uh, uh, one, one particular innings was probably the best I've seen when she knocked us out in 2017. So that, those three make a pretty good combination. Speaking of being biased and speaking of, of course, being Australian, my question is, I think obviously um, one one was an Australian who I think transformed the game in Australia. I, when I was growing up as a, as a young Australian, cricket wasn't the, the sport that it is now. It, was, it wasn't that popular. We were going through a pretty tough time in the mid 80s and Shane Warne made cricket sexy again. So I, I think his impact on Australian cricket's been monumental. Uh, but Murali, well, you can't deny his numbers and his figures. And he single-handedly probably kept uh, Sri Lanka in the game for a very long time. So. I'm going to go one. Calling or texting? I prefer. Well, uh, I think texting is, is pretty efficient. So when you're a head coach, sometimes you've got to get around a number of people and uh, you're dealing with a, a lot of millennials. I think uh, texting sort of cuts through a lot of stuff and you get a lot of cheap by texting. So, And certainly WhatsApp's been my friend over the last few years as well, where you need a group message out there. It's a very efficient way of getting messages out there. Absolutely, especially now in mean, WhatsApp and Zoom are our best friends, let's be honest. But uh, yeah, the next sentence is a music artist that you'd love to watch live is? Uh, Billy Joel. I think I saw Billy Joel as a, as a youngster. I think I love pretty much all of his songs. Haven't seen him for a very long time, uh, but his music's timeless. So I think he'd be right up there. If there's one thing I have learned from Elise Perry, it is? 
Uh, preparation, I think. Elise leaves nothing to chance. I think, um, you know, she's so committed to, to her professionalism and uh, making sure that she dots the I's and crosses the T's throughout her preparation. Um, she's a very determined person. So I, I think just that attention to detail was probably not my strongest suit, but it's something I've definitely learned off her. You agree, you're absolutely elite. But uh, yeah, the next question that I have is a movie I've watched 100 times over is Braveheart. And I, I don't watch many movies over and over, but it's one movie I, I, I never get tired of. I can watch that. I've tried to even get my son Jai into watching it with me, and he, he watches bits and pieces. But definitely Braveheart. There was a movie when I was younger, it's not that popular, but it starred Robert Redford, which was called The Natural, um, about a young baseballer. And uh, that was a great story when I was growing up. I watched that a lot of times as well. Wow, that's brilliant. I mean, I can't wait to watch the Matthew Mott biopic. I mean, I, I'm waiting for that one to release. But the, the, the next question that I have is that, uh, you know, if I could pick my last ever meal, it would be? Oh, um, probably Japanese. That's that's the one I, I like the most. Like, love going out with the family to eat Japanese food over a teppanyaki grill cooked in front of you. Uh, very fresh produce. Uh, good tasting and uh, yeah, great flavours. Speaking of great flavours, of course, this one is definitely going to divide opinion. Veggie Mike is... Absolutely beautiful on toast with a nice okay. bit of amount of butter in the morning. Um, I have uh, grown up on it though and so it's an acquired taste, I think. It's definitely, um, there's a saying in Australia that uh, people um, uh, you know, can be Marmite, which is either you love it or hate it, and that's exactly yeah. the same for Vegemite. But uh, I, I would have thought it'd be perfect on a naan bread, I, and I did do that a lot when I was in India as well. So for those people out there, give it a go. Yeah, that's something I'm definitely going to try, or not, depending on what I feel, because of course it divides opinion. But anyway, the next sentence that I have is my favorite cricketer of all time has to be. My favourite cricket of all time would have to be Brian Lara. I um, I grew up, um, you know, watching him as a young player. I, I went over and played league cricket in England the year where he scored that magnificent 501, and I think he scored seven centuries in a row uh, as a left-hander. Of course, he, he was a swashbuckler. I think he turned games, he won games on his own. There's a lot of great players, but I think uh, if I had to turn the TV on and watch someone, it would definitely be Brian Lara. Ordering out, cooking or going to a fancy restaurant, my go-to has to be? I love cooking at home. Uh, I love entertaining with friends over, cooking a barbecue uh, with some nice red wine, maybe a couple of beers and, and yeah, just entertaining, having friends around, a nice relaxed atmosphere. Uh, that certainly would be my preference over going out for dinner. I do like going out for dinner, but yeah, definitely having friends around and, and relaxing and, and enjoying each other's company. I mean, I can't even make a couple of tips, so I've got to, I've got to take a couple of tips from you, Deb. But uh, the, the next sentence that I have is, if I could have a drink with any sportsman from any other sport, it would definitely be... Oh, any other sportsman. I, I think... Um, oh, Tiger Woods would have to be up there. I'm, a, I'm an avid golfer. I think, um, you know, obviously, he's around the same age as me. I grew up watching him play. Uh, I absolutely love my golf, so definitely he, he'd be on the top of the list at the moment. He's a little bit um, restricted at the moment, so he wouldn't be able to, to get away as much either, so I'd be able to pin him down and ask him plenty of questions. Fair play, fair play. And the last question that I have is, if I could give any advice to 10-year-old Matthew, it would be? Yeah, we often talk about this. I think it's a great question. I, I think um, to enjoy myself a lot more, I think I, as a cricketer, I definitely enjoyed myself, but um, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Go out and play the game for the game's sake. Uh, and, and really just try and get rid of that fear of failure. I think as, as a cricketer or a sports person, that's the biggest thing that eats away is, is the little bird on, on the shoulder just saying, you know, I can't do this or I can't do that. And just going out and making plenty of mistakes, but uh, having fun doing it. Totally agree. And guys, that sums it up. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Matthew. Of course, guys, please like and subscribe and check out MTAC TV. Subscribe, do all of those things. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a legendary day for, for the channel because we have an absolute legend on the channel. And uh, yeah, I think that wraps it up. We move.